This week, we talk about a second hand of fate. We go on an adventure with Alto and Hyper Light Drift -er into some bunker punks. I may have run out of cool things to say for this intro, but that shouldn't stop you from sticking around for episode 88 of the Indie Game Riot. <laughs> Everybody, this is Josh, and we're here with episode 88 of Indie Game Riot, the podcast. I'm here with Tech. Yes. And Rev. Finally. So all I was, I was just adjusting my camera there. We're all one big that. family again. Yeah. Uh, I, decided to, I decided to bring them back on after last week's shenanigans. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as Chicanery. Yeah. Uh, so this, uh, this has been a week from what I've been a week. From what I've heard, man, this is going to be fun. This has been a week. Um, okay, well, who wants to go first about themselves? Because we're narcissists. I don't know. Josh, you go first. All right, I'll go first. It was my birthday. Happy uh, birthday. Yeah, I didn't get any birthday from anyone, from any of you. Fuck you all. I posted on your Facebook. You know, Actually, you did. You did. I posted you on know, your he Facebook, did. and I was, I was polite and, about it. I did and, not and, give you my general one. And, and let, let me <laughs> tell you, for real. Happy like, birthday, and I'll go the, die. The day of your birthday and the day after your birthday were days that I just didn't, like, log on to Facebook. Yeah. So I had no idea. You're like, man, his birthday is this week. I don't want to be. I don't, <laughs> yeah. No evidence. Yeah, exactly. I'm just going to claim yeah. ignorance. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I see. <laughs> but, yeah, How's it's. I am, I am now 28. Uh, birthday is all right. You know what sucks, though? Like, after, like, after 21, your birthdays are no longer fun. And after 25, you have nothing to look forward to. Like... <laughs> Like, because at twenty five, your car insurance goes down. And that's it. Yeah, that's that's the last thing. <laughs> no, but, are uh, you kidding me? After that, you're like that much closer to the the to age death. where you don't have to give a fuck. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, but Rev, you're you're already like teetering on that, and you're not even that old. <laughs> well, Rev already doesn't give a fuck. He yeah, just, exactly. He took early, not give a fuck. Yeah, that's uh, true. But you know, my but, my twenty fifth year was horrible. So I'll well, he lives in California. <laughs> isn't everybody in California sort of not give a fuck? I don't know. Like, isn't that like the the atmosphere? I don't know. The Someone only time I've ever been to California was, was to, <laughs> the only time I've been to California was to touch do a layover in LAX. Um, so anyway, the uh, yeah, it was a good it was a good birthday actually. Uh, my wife made food; it was really good. Uh, Clue pig and and mac uh, mac salad that she makes and uh, stuff like that. And I my kids. Helped make the cake with homemade cheese cream I cheese cheese cream cheese icing is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and they made uh, the kids made birthday cards for me, so that was that was cool. nice. You know, all the the uh, sappy yeah. parent dad, stuff. Dad birthday. Yeah. Dad birthday. I the only thing missing was like a tie. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> or maybe a mug did says you number get the, one dad. Did you get the number one mug? Yeah. Number one dad mug. I haven't gotten that yet. Not yet. <laughs> N number two, okay, it's dad. <laughs> <laughs> number two, give it your best try. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, number it, one, you tried. <laughs> that's what it's like with my with, with my daughter since she's the first kid. It's like ah, eh, I tried, <laughs> and now I now I learned. <laughs> You're gonna turn out the way that the school turns you out. <laughs> no, hell no. She yeah, gonna, I know. <laughs> she's gonna end up speaking Spanish and making enchiladas. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's true, actually. Her majority of her class. Actually, no, I'm trying to think about it. I th I think she's the only white kid in her class. Which is weird, because she isn't even, like, fully white. Well, she yeah, she's actually uh, only half white. She, the rest of her is, like, yeah. Pacific Islander, so that's true, yeah. too. Um, so there's no true white kids in her class, but whatever. Wow. It's interesting. Actually, she, she did make, she does have a lot of friends. That's so, good. Um, that's nice. I wasn't sure if she was going to. Well, she's at the age where everybody's friends. Well, yeah, everyone's her, everyone's her friend, her best friend. Ah, no. yeah. she's one of those. Okay. Although there's this one kid, I kind of want to, I, I, I kind of want to find and kick him in the face. Ooh, but uh, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. Yeah. Uh, how about you, oh, Tech? Okay, I will go next. Um, by the time this episode goes up, I will be unemployed. 
because I have my next two days, my last two days uh, tomorrow and the next day, and I'm pretty excited about that. I had a guy, so my my first delivery today, I didn't have a pin in my pocket, and I couldn't be bothered to go back in the store and pick one up, so I was like, all right, fuck it. I'm just going to tell him that I forgot that, it, that the last customer stole my pen. He doesn't know. I'm a delivery driver. Fuck anybody. And uh, I go down there, and I get up there, and I'm like, hey. And he meets me outside, and it's this long. It's like a farmhouse, and he meets me outside down this long. Um, it's not, he wasn't far away from his house. But I'm like, hey, man, I for, my last customer stole my pen. And he's like, hold on. I got gotcha. you. And, and I'm like, all right. And he goes he goes into his house, and I see some pens on like the door, and I'm like, why didn't, why didn't you just grab one of those? And he comes out with like, this many pens <laughs> and he's like seriously like you know i run a small engine repair and, and stuff just hand them out give them as many people as possible i'm like okay so i take this massive amount of pens i can barely even like fit them in my one hand like so i have like four or five of them in my car i gave three of them to one of our drivers and the rest of them are in the store but here's the funny part about this the drawer where we keep all of the pens, uh, our GM, Jess, has been real. She, she got really angry because she needed a pen and there weren't any. And so she got kind of, and the drivers always take pens and the pens disappear. It's a pizza place. And so she wrote a note. It's does like, that happen drivers, at pizza places? Like, pens is that disappear? a thing? Hell yeah. Man, this is <laughs> and, a pizza uh, place. Watch your pens. And, and so she was like, and so she was like, drivers need to start supplying their own pens. And then. <laughs> Somebody on the note, and this just shows like the 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 level of like chill that we are in this store. Somebody on the note in pen wrote "fuck you" <laughs> on it, but now she and doesn't that's have one... to worry about it. Now that's now there are two full drawers of pens. <laughs> but now, the... wait, so they wrote "fuck you" on the pen? No, on the paper that oh. she wrote. I was gonna say because someone's gonna hand that to a customer. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, yeah, so like... what you're really trying to say is that that the pen thing was the highlight of your week. No, the the pen the pen thing okay. was the highlight of my day. Uh, I really wish I could like remember what the highlight of my week was, but I I I didn't really do anything this week. I think that's the highlight of my week. I oh oh, oh I've uh, I, I I started playing Dirty Bomb again. Oh and uh, and I I've, I've been playing I've been playing so many so many competitive games now. So I've been playing like a lot of Dirty Bomb, which is a competitive okay. first person shooter, not at all indie whatsoever. Tell me you're playing MOBA. No. And then I, 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 I'm actually starting to really, really, really enjoy Rocket League now. And you and I like, gotta play. We we do. I'm so bad. And I, I really get wish. A copy like, of it. If I, I also need to get uh, another cable because my P, the PS4 controller that I've been using up here, um, we only have one. I only have one USB to uh, micro USB cable, yeah. and that's what we use to charge the controller downstairs. So I need to get another one of those. But yeah, Rev, if you get Rocket League, we all should play. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be down for that. I don't know so. if your will your computer run it. I know it. I know it runs well, can, very, very well on a lot of systems. I should be fine. My my laptop hasn't struggled with too much recently. You, you might. That's I will good. say that you might have a hard time uh, differentiating the teams because I yeah. I, can, I can see uh, color and I can't. <laughs> it is I, hard. I, I've noticed in a couple of the streams that I have a, a really hard time with that. But you know, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, Rev. Work, work, more work, some more work. I've drank a lot. I heard you made best friends with uh, the guy at your work. Uh, I'm going to kill him. Yeah, like, best friend. Like he's, he's literally... I, tell, tell, us, tell us about him. Don't use his name. Uh, <laughs> we'll just call him uh, Dick. That's a good way for it. So so Dick, uh, D- Dick irritates the balls off of me. And uh, you've been castrated via via irritation, via anger. Like my rage has shriveled them up and had them fall off. Um, they like went into you and you shat them out earlier. Yeah. Something like that. I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah. So the middle of today, we have a, we have a remote management tool that uh, is our primary way to reach into all of our client systems. Um, you know, somebody calls up and it's like, hey, I need you to help me find this file. Cool, I can remote into their system through this tool. Uh, that runs on a series of servers, a SQL server to manage the database and then the actual application server. And he's like, are you using it? And I was like, right this minute? No, I'm doing something unrelated. And he was like, cool, I gotta reboot the servers. And he's like, awesome, so he reboots. And then 10 minutes later, like he, he's like, oh, and I'm applying this patch to the software that we're using. Okay. And I was like, <laughs> okay, 
but that stops us from being able to use the tool Stop. and he's like he's like yeah well it kicked off and i can't really cancel it without causing problems so you'll just have to wait and it took like an hour and a half to to patch this and i Is had it... people calling in and it was like hey i need you to do this and i was like i would love to i can't and then uh, i was somebody else was like hey i need you to help me locate my files because we're just transitioning them from you know, an, uh, a single server to multiple servers, and we needed to. Some files hadn't copied over for user directories and stuff like that. And I was like, I would love to, but I can't. I'll call you back in an hour or so. Was he the reason that you were late? Huh? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow! <laughs> Fuck him. Yeah. He was. He was. Uh, he was really congested today and really hungover from last night. So he went to the urgent care. And got a bunch of prescriptions. Who gets stuff. fucked up on a Thursday? It's well, Thirsty Thursday. Well, I I asked him. I, I like I sent out a company wide email and was like, no, seriously, can we not do patching and updating of mission critical systems in the middle of the day? Uh, and he was like, like a reboot. I understand because that's five ten minutes max, you know. Yeah. But but this is this is bloody ridiculous and he's like well i couldn't do it last night because i was at the bar and i wanted to get it done today because i'm going to the bar right after after work and it was just like i'm gonna can kill you so yeah there was there was a lot of a lot of rage and my the my sea level uh apparently definitely understood my my rage because he came out with um, my my favorite sipping whiskey, the twelve year double wood Balvenie, and uh, poured me several shots worth into a tumbler, an antique tumbler from nineteen twenty eight. Wow, and, uh, classy. Yeah. yeah, so we we sipped Scotch whiskey and drank wine, and then uh, it was three o'clock in the afternoon, and I was still having to do work, and then I got here eventually. Yeah. Now we're now here. We're here. Now we're here to irritate the balls. Now we're here. here. Um, and you know what else? You know what irritated. else clear? You know what else clears up irritated balls, Josh? The irritated ball syndrome. Uh, yeah, the irritated ball syndrome can be cured with an induced injection. Are you bored with the same old games? Yeah. Why then give yourself an indie news injection? Thanks, indie games. This week on Indie News Injection, uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about, I have no image for this on the side, um, but I want to talk about it because um, just to do some clarification about the game we talked about last week called Kona uh, during our Peep Show segment, uh, the devs actually commented on the the video when it was posted and um, just gave some clarification because we were wondering, uh, the first thing was we were wondering about why they were releasing it early access when it's like a, a narrative game. It's kind of weird, right? Right. Um, so what they said, um, to answer the question slash confusion about early access, um, we I'm quoting this. So we went on early access for the same reasons other games are, are going on early access, to show a glimpse of the game and to gather feedback from the community. While we agree this is not the ideal scenario for an adventure game, this is our first title as a company, and we have to be careful, plus, and more importantly, we are not rich. So based on that, they're saying that um, that they need the money to continue development uh, through early access, which. OK. Yep. Um, totally cool. And uh, that they want to get the feedback for the game, although right. I mean, I mean, that's pro their prerogative. But in my mind, I feel like for a narrative well game. But that should but they, already they, be. They do mention in that comment that they about forty percent of the story is in the early access title. So you, even everybody who's played 30%. the game early access will still have something to come back to on launch day right. and enjoy that's new. Right, and that's and that's cool. Yeah, especially well, like, it's almost necessary for for a. Uh, well, yeah, like, what's game, the though. point? Or a narrative game, yeah. Um. So yeah, they have about they said they have about forty five hundred people that have played the game in early access. Um. So they're gonna have, like you said, they're gonna have something to come back to when it's fully released, and they're getting it at a discount. So that's at least nice. Um, yeah. As opposed to you know full price when it's actually finished. Yep. Um. And they're being optimistic by saying that they potentially have several hundreds of thousands of people who will be playing it. Well, I'm just saying, if the early access has already moved 4,500 units, that's pretty good. 
Yeah, that's actually yeah. that's actually uh, about as good as you could ever want. It's not too bad. Um, no, they got some. Not they got some decent coverage on YouTube. That's good um, as well. So uh, they're saying early access is uh, for us a space to sell a chunk of our game at a smaller price while gathering feedback to make it better. We trade a discount for a beta test. Um, still, those beta testers will have access to the final game and have that sixty percent left to um, go and discover and. Uh, in yeah. their opinion, it's a big reason to open up the I, game. And I think that that's actually like a really well-reasoned uh, reason. Damn it. <laughs> I thought there was a better <laughs> way to word that. That's uh, a very well-reasoned response and and uh, mindset going into early access. Because there are a lot of games that go into early access sort of just being like, hey, buy this early game and we're yeah. going to build it while you play it. And then when it's done, there's going to be an update and everybody is happy because it's out. And then they're in early access for a year or two, and then, you know, you don't really know what happens. Whereas they're like, "Look, this is this is our plan going into early access. This is what we have uh, set up for everything. This is, you know, uh, timelines and all of our plans." And they're doing it, and I got a lot of respect for that. The second thing that they uh, mentioned, I think, it was this is kind of a case of semantics, really. But yeah, um, they said the game is not really episodic; that they're having four games that are going to be released that are within the same universe they said that they're they consider them big enough to be standalone games and they gave kind of a a comparison to mass effect they like do we call mass effect episodic i think that um first of all i think episodic is just kind of a thing that came about because of telltale like it's yeah i think it's been around but people are just now calling it episodic well, um, like the other episodic. thing, but they their 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 example of Mass Effect, I think Half-Life the reason that we too. and yeah there is that, but I think games like Mass Effect we don't call that episodic. We call it a trilogy first of all because there's three games, um, but also I think it depends on the length of game. You know, you're talking about Telltale mm. has like you know two or three hours of gameplay per episode. Yeah, um, six and, and episodes, they're, and, and they're looking chat. right, but but their uh, parabola is looking to to do around six hours on average for gameplay. So that's right. So, I mean, it, it really, I think it's a case of semantics. I mean, yeah. episodic or not, it's the point is, is that it's, uh, you, you know, at this point, the episodic, uh, the episodic word is just a marketing term. And if they don't want to use episodic as a marketing <laughs> we'll term, put it in the cloud. I, I, totally, <laughs> I, I totally get it. I totally get that. They don't want to have this seem episodic because I, like they're saying, the story isn't, continuing it's just a different story in a different place right in in, a, in the same world i mean and again telltale has done that uh yeah. with um I, I guess that was more dlc but still the same thing um it's it's just wording that's all it is yeah. but anyway uh yeah. you know what just, else is semantics ju- semantics uh <laughs> the, the number t- the number two yeah, the number two. A.K.A. episode in, two. Just kidding. As in Hand of Fate 2, which is a game uh, that uh, seems pretty awesome. I can't wait. Uh, the, the developers, uh, Defiant... Uh, what, what's their full name? This is pretty, Defiant, this is pretty exciting. Uh, Defiant... Uh, now you got me all screwed up. <laughs> dang it, I had him on Twitter. Yeah, it's, it's, just, uh, it's just Defiant Games or Defiant... I think it's just a. Uh, yeah, we, it just we are def- totally Defiant pro- sorry. Just, Defiant sorry. development. I knew yeah. it was like I was like divine. I was yeah. like define developers is not it, but it's like that. <laughs> we don't have that much of a cheat sheet here on Indie Game Riot. Yes. Uh, they are um, making Hand of Fate two. Exciting. Kind of cool. Yeah, it is exciting. And, and it's exciting it's, that look, Hand of Fate's still getting yeah. the recognition. It's like it's so it's so crazy because like we talked about this game. A few months before it fully released, and then it fully released, and it you know we did were pretty good. We got the scoop on this, and and then and then it goes on the consoles, and the consoles just eat it up, and people are like, "Oh my god, what is this game?" I'm proud of that. I'm, that's, and, and I, I'm proud I, of a I lot think, of things on this show, but yeah. I'm proud of the times we get scoops <laughs> on on games like yeah. this, like Hand of Fate. We got the scoop on, and then it, it blew up. And apparently, this is the first time Destructoid got a hold of it. Or at, yeah, this, they, or at least this, or at least this, this, this author, you know. The, this the, the, if you search for Hand of Fate, the only mention of it is, uh, you know, a, a 
link to the trailer and a paragraph that says uh this is a magic the gathering meets uh you magic know, the action gathering event. Yeah, for the deck building aspect. Yeah, because they're I, well, okay, but, no, not at all. Collectible. They they it's describe a CCG. It, it's a yeah. it's a deck builder, yeah. but that's not really the case. It's a collectible. It's a CCG deck well, builder, but, but, but and that's you, all you, they have. That's all they had on it, which is not true. <laughs> uh, some some differences between Hand of Fate One and Hand of Fate Two. Uh, so far, they're talking about um. It's going to be less about assembling the strongest uh, hand possible and hoping for the most. Uh, less about uh, hoping for the strong hand and more about um, coming up with effective combos for the person's play style. So if you played Hand of Fate, or rather, if you haven't played Hand of Fate, uh, you have um, uh, a hand with uh, certain things that you can use in. Uh, in combat, like your um, like your shield, and there are other various such weapons. Th- yeah, there are various weapons, and and, and you and you build a, a deck, but but also the the decks are the the bad things that you have to deal with, like the the monsters and everything, and the 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 the, the steps that you take on the on the the game board, and um, yeah, they're they're going to be changing that up. They they weren't really giving too much. But I'm really excited to see what they have. The the one thing is that they're not saying that they're just reinventing it here. Yeah. It's going to be Hand of Fate improved yep. plus different. Yeah, different stuff. Different character and different, you know, yeah. different content. But it's the same game. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, still the, with, it's still the with fun Arkham combat. It's still going to be absolutely fucking beautiful. And it's still going to be really fun. I, I'm honestly surprised that this game didn't win... Um, more, more awards, awards yeah did. that was a little surprising yeah um well you know what else is surprising germans they are kind of surprising in uh spanish their inquisition that was surprising Span- to certain the people the spanish inquisition gave 30 days notice rev did they oh. they did well to people <laughs> anyone, you mean, and anyone who is still there and considered a heretic they killed 30 30 uh, days notice on. to people who didn't receive <laughs> yeah <laughs> mail yeah <laughs> uh anyway so moving on geek fest is something that's happening um, in South Jersey, and it's going to be happening on October 29th of this year from 10 to 5 uh, in Woodbury, Woodbury Heights, Heights, New Jersey. Um, and it's actually fairly cheap to get in. Uh, $8 for anyone 11 and over. $5 for anyone in costume, so you uh, get a discount for, for cosplay. Um, $5 for anyone cool enough to bring non-perishable food donation. For uh for an animal shelter, so there's kind of like a uh, cool charity thing going on there, and it's free for anyone under who are ten and under. So cool. uh, I just thought this was a co- like we kind of find these smaller conventions uh, spread around, um, you know, Eastern Seaboard. I don't know if very many. Well, you're going to TitanCon. That's a smaller one yep. uh, over on the Western. So I just like to kind of shout them out, even though this one's a little far away and. Um, I just happened to see it on Twitter. I forget through who, but I thought it would be cool to give it some attention. So if you're on the Eastern Seaboard or are traveling over this way somewhere around that time, uh, maybe you could stop in on yep. the 29th and do your thing and show October off your stuff. October 29th, uh, 2016 from 10 to 5. So you got to wake up a little bit early, all you game devs out there. Apparently, <laughs> Oof, apparently last like, year they had uh, six thousand over 6,000 attendees. That's a lot of people. Yeah, That's actually a lot of people. So, it's in a high school, isn't it? Uh, community center. Yeah. Community center. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, sure as uh, as it grows, I'm sure they'll find something bigger. But you know, no yeah. sense in spending all the money on something you don't need to do. Yep. Speaking of bigger and on the eastern seaboard, um, my dick. There is right. Uh, <laughs> different games conference is uh, is happening literally right now and tomorrow. In as of this recording, uh, in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, they are running an arcade and they have, you know, panels and all that fun stuff. One of the best parts about this is that they're also streaming, uh, the, the entire thing. So if you don't happen to be in New York or going there tomorrow, uh, you can still catch a lot of it. And I assume they're going to have, you know, the, uh, 
the the recordings up afterwards but uh various uh various people like austin walker um do, 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 do. Who else do we got? Postmortem from the Take Care, a game and wellness jam. Uh, but basically, they've always they've always had a focus on you know inclusion and accessibility, and uh, really cool to see that this is uh, this is happening again. How, how, so, do they give a kind of a scope for how big this one is? Um, I don't. See I, would, I would assume it's a, it's bigger than the the one I was just talking about, based on quality of website and such. But you never know. Oh. You never, you never know. We've got a fantastic website, better than Giant Bombs, but you know that's actually true. Yeah. <laughs> but Giant uh, Bomb is one of the top gaming web uh, podcasts. But yeah, right? no, yeah. they've uh, they've been they've been going for for several years, and uh, based on pictures, they had a tiny presentation two hours ago that only had 150 people crammed into a room. Only only yeah. so uh yeah there's that so check it out at uh differentgames.org and uh should be good to go yeah they, uh, do, they do have some big uh bigger names actually looking do they? speaking of giant bomb uh, the editor from giant bomb is going to give a keynote along with uh yeah, I said that. oh you did well, i wasn't yeah, I listening him. to you he was the one person i mentioned by name kotaku person that was also there so i was gonna say but i wasn't listening to you Oh, makes sense. Um, you know who else isn't going to listen to you? <laughs> no, yeah. I was, was going to say, speaking of not listening to me, uh, if you're in Southern California, oh, Orange County Sorry. specifically, um, you uh, get the chance to come listen to me uh, <laughs> this weekend at, uh, at uh, CSU Fullerton. There is uh, TitanCon. It's free to attend for students, non-students, children, uh, cosplayers, hookers, and, and drug dealers. But no drugs are allowed on campus. Um, anyways, uh, I'm doing a, a panel called uh, Indie Games and You, Why You Shouldn't Be Scared of, the, of Going Indie. And uh, yeah, It's a modified it's talk on the one that we did at Too Many Games. If you if you didn't see that one, it will be a modified version of that, kind of updated and modified so that I can do it by myself without you know Josh and Tech to bounce things off. I'm, tr- of. I'm trolling your friends in the chat. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's a it's free, but you do need to sign up for a free ticket um, just so that uh, they have a good idea as to how many people to expect. The panel is going to be ten to eleven o'clock in the morning at the uh, someplace amphitheater. I'm in the schedule. That's all I know. <laughs> good luck. Right? There it's going to be fun. Uh, well, you know what else is fun? Um. What speculation? Speculation. Yeah, uh, I what thought it'd be got? cool. I just thought of this idea for okay. our discussion point today. I thought it'd be cool, and I know we haven't seen all the games for 2016 yet, but yeah. from uh, from from what we've seen so far, okay, I'd like to know what your early uh, your early predictions for the next year's Independent Games Festival. Okay. Uh, kind of like people who are might be up for some awards so far because there's some games uh, I think that have already kind of blown up and that you're going to expect to see either based on their success and or reputation or you know different things like that so yeah what are your thoughts who do you think should or it will either way uh, boss um, one boss 101 I, I think I think <laughs> that the witness is going to be nominated for a bunch of shit Agreed. Um, probably the artistic ones, or the, uh, design. the 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 or design, or um, the the innovative yeah. thing. I I don't think it deserves. It well, like that, I said, reputation. But, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. It's going to be on there. Obviously, they they can't not put it on there. I think that I'm, I didn't mean to steal the thunder from any of you guys, but yeah. I think that uh, Stardew Valley is going to be on at least one or two. It's going to be nominated for something. Yeah, Stardew Valley it, needs it has to, to be there. Um, even even if it doesn't win anything, like I have no yeah. clue because we again uh-huh. we haven't seen all the games for the year. Exactly. But it needs to be nominated for something. Mm-hmm. Even it has to. If, you you know what it might win if anything, kind of like in an Undertale way, it might win the Audience Choice Award. Mm. Yeah. Um, 
just based there, on that. Well, let, let me tell you, like, what's crazy too is that like I think a little bit more so than the than the Undertale community. Like the Undertale community is insane in their support of that game and like the love <laughs> that they have for have the people- characters and the world. I have people on my Facebook uh, that I'm friends with that are like, you know what we really need to start a petition for? An Undertale's animated series on Cartoon Network. I was just like, guys, no. It's already a sequel to a fantastic game. Just leave it at that. Yeah, I don't know about all that. I feel like that's going to ruin it. (laughs) Right, but but on the topic of of the the, the fan base of that game that took the, the, the IGF by storm, really... Um, and the world, because nobody was expecting that. Mm. Um, the, the the community around Stardew Valley, myself sort of included, even though I'm not really like in the community, is so careful and analytical. Like the, there are people who plan out their lives in this game, <laughs> like to to a crazy degree. To the point, like I was getting to that point. I played that game. For how 60 many, hours how, in a week. How many, weeks. how many hours do I have in... Uh, H-L-N-O-P-Q-R. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I have to. <laughs> there it is. Uh, 65 hours. I, I've, I have 65 hours logged in that game. To the, and and all the, most of those 65 hours are me playing and then pausing and then going back to the wiki. And I'd have like eight wiki pages all open at once and it'd be like the type of fish that I have to do here and, and how long does this crop last and uh, what do I have to give to this person on their birthday so they'll like me and will they be around and what's this do or what happens when I get two hearts with this person and how do I trigger that event and it's like everyone's like collaborating being like how do we like use this me- these mechanics like how do we find the most efficient way to do these things uh, and and they're like dissecting this game not from like the code but from like some of it's from the code, but some of it's from like playing it and like figuring out like the the best ways, like the best crops and all this stuff. And it's awesome. I would say, I would say, uh, no, 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 <laughs> Talk totally about Stardew fine, Valley no. for, but that's why it's gonna. That's why it, it it has to be nominated for something. I think Nomoria could do. Well, Ooh. Nomoria, I actually don't think it will. Uh, I don't, I don't think, think it will, but I. I, I I think it could. Well, but well, talking about community though, the no more. Well, like, no, no, listen to this because <laughs> if Factorio finishes. Yeah. By the way, what it, do they have to be a complete game or do these early development? Dude, it's games? the IGF. They 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 make their own rules. Well, like I I don't know if it like if they consider early development games eligible for those awards, but let's just say that, that Dragon Cancer. It was, wasn't that last year? Nope. That was nominated. Nope. For, I thought maybe for narrative. Uh, or or the or... Um, or the Nuovo, what's the like experimental could be, um, but if Factorio is finished and is mm-hmm. eligible for nomination, I think that for design. I can see that. I think I think that yeah. and maybe and maybe innovation as well, and and I think it's kind of in the same vein as Nomoria, which is why I don't think, like I well, think I, that I, overtakes well, Nomoria. I I actually was able to describe Nomoria to somebody on reddit today because somebody asked like oh top game top games and i was like uh here are the ones that i've played this year that i that came out this year that i really liked and i was like no moria it's basically dwarf fortress light but that doesn't mean that it's easy and it's amazing uh-huh. and, and so but like they i don't know if no moria is no moria might be too serious of a game for them to even consider because no moria is a are game you kidding me too Her serious story. No, 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 Rev, Rev, you cannot, no. you cannot get an experience from Nomoria playing for 10 minutes. They also, you have to play they also nominated, like hours at a time. they also nominated that one where, uh, like, made you feel really uncomfortable. What the hell was it called? Be more was specific. It, oh, shit. oh, oh a, uh, Ori and the Black Forest? No, um, oh. I mean, they did do that oh, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, 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 the one where you're on the girl's computer. Yeah, yeah. that one. Uh, I can't think of the I can't remember name. what it's called. But they nominated oh. that one. That was pretty serious. Um, so. Also, uh, going just just going back to why I don't know if Nomoria would even be considered. I have sixty five hours logged in Nomoria. I haven't remotely touched the the depths that this game goes Stardew. into. <laughs> oh, th- uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, another one I would probably be uh, for maybe like narrative is Firewatch. Whether you like it or not, it's it's gotten a lot of attention. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Clutch Firewatch. Truck. <laughs> no, well, I don't. I don't know. Why? Come on! I, I'm not you saying not it's look, not a good game. I just don't think they're gonna. I don't think they're gonna bite. They, 
Really? Yeah. You don't think that they were gonna like? You didn't see the list of games that they had? Oh, there's no. Like, okay, well, you're hey, talking about people that have submitted their games to be nominated. Uh, I'm talking about like no, the I'm finalists. Talking about, I'm talking about last year. Yeah, you're, I'm like, talking about like, finalists, like the five, four or five people that are up for the war that go to the ceremony and are hoping to win. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not talking about the big ass list that everyone's like, me, me, me. Yeah, I'm. I'm not either. I'm comparing last year's list to the games this year. Uh, okay, most innovative. I already have the one that's probably well that deserves to win. Oh, it is it. Icebound. I was gonna bring that up next, actually. I, uh, I don't know if they're going to though. Like, I, I, I certainly think it should. It should. But I don't know because I, the one thing about that pisses me off about IGF and Indicate and like that whole group of company, um, mm-hmm. is that they're very. It's almost a little clicky, you know? No, like, it's very clicky. You know what I'm, but you know what I'm it's saying. It's extremely like, clicky, yeah. It, yeah. So I don't know if Icebound necessarily falls in their circle of people Which they sucks like. sucks, because that, that game, like... And that, that, and that, that pisses me off. Closest, that game is the closest thing that you can get to a vir- virtual reality headset, and it doesn't even cost, like, a, it costs a, a minute fraction of that. It pisses right. me off. Um, but, you know, that's the reality of the situation. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't know if Subnautica is going to be done by then. I yeah, I, to be fair, there haven't been a whole lot of big indies that like came said, out. Oh no! Yeah. You know what is? You know what is? Huh? No Man's Sky gonna sweep. Guaranteed. Uh, I just thought of that. Like it just. Yeah. Yep. No, no Man's Sky is going to sweep. No, that, IGF. I don't you know, know about sweep. It's gonna sweep. Are if you her story me? swept, if her story swept, I don't know if No Man's Sky can sweep. Like uh, I, I don't. Well, but here's but here's the thing. Like I think there's and, enough. And I, and a lot of a lot of listeners who might might be maybe this is like their one of their first episodes listening in. We haven't really talked about No Man's Sky because it's No Man's Sky and everybody's heard of it and you can search it and you can find a we thousand videos. And there it. is talking about yeah. it. Yeah. And, yeah. But but like No Man's Sky is absolutely amazing. Well, here's it's an amazing premise. Here's a thought they're, about they're, it. They're showing us we don't we don't know we really don't when you think about it, we don't know a whole lot about it, and everyone's yeah. so there, there's a lot of hype surrounding it, and I am yeah. very excited about it. Yeah, but what if it turns out to be like boring, repetitive? You right? mean like every procedurally generated well, game but, ever? Okay, repetitive, it, repetitive. Maybe? Yeah, but there's repetitive games that that draw you back for a reason for for whatever right. reason like like well, binding of isaac or something but what about what about minecraft that's not repetitive you I can do it anything more, I think that nothing it has, but well, repetitive but, but, but here's the thing i, well, I like, think you that punch this game you punch I, tree, you build well you shit. play There's, minecraft wrong then i i genuinely i genuinely believe that no man's sky well obviously no man's sky has so much more than minecraft but I think it also has more things that you can do because unlike Minecraft, which is sort of like a dead world and it's all yours for the, pl- and it's, and it's just your playground. No man's well, sky is like, no man's sky is about exploration. Well, it can be about exploration or it could be about trading or it could be about mining. Well, that's, or see, be, that's the thing. It could be about trading with learning who, about like, all, the, all the alien races. Trading or with it could who, be though? about being a pirate. There, there are uh, NPC trading ships and there are, planets okay. with infrastructure right like and, and there's there's combat and i don't yeah. know a whole lot about it um but like i in my mind what i would want to do is like i'd be like i'd be the explorer and the zoologist you know or whatever the hell yeah. the equivalent of space animals would be yeah uh so that's what i would want to do although i do like trading the combat is probably like on the low thing for me right. so but is that going to hold my attention enough for me to continue to do that sort of thing or is it going to be like, oh, here's another rhino alien thing that has like no. a slightly different so, horn? You know, what I, I, mean? I don't, I don't know if they're going to be that similar. Well, but you also, you also, you also have to consider too that they they recently came out with numbers that said that ninety percent of all the planets are going to be uninhabitable and have no life. The the ten percent of planets that do have habitable life are going to have unintelligent life. Ninety percent of the ten percent is going to be, you know, unintelligent, you know, like dogs and cats. So and then nine so percent. The the ten percent of the ten percent will have actual like. To one percent. Things, yeah. Okay, but 
I don't know. But in that case, is the scope going to be so grand that it's going to be like, well, where are these things? You know what I mean? Yeah. I, you know, I know. I, I, I know they care. have ways. I'm so excited for I it. Don't, I, don't, I care. don't think. I don't think they're. I don't think they're gonna. But anyway, well, this isn't supposed to be No Man's Sky Hour. Uh, exactly. It's, uh, but but you're right. Is, I think it is going to be an you IGF. Know, all, all this is uh, favorite. All, really, this is this is sort of. I know this is sort of projecting, but I I think that this this is less. Uh, who we think IGF is going to like the 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 people who, who are going bitch. to be ready. And 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 more who we like really want to win, who we think have a have a shot. <laughs> yeah, well, there's that too. But I, yeah. I legitimately think these people, if they yeah. submit themselves, yeah, uh, would definitely. But I, I, uh, we've got a whole like three quarters of a year to go. So yeah, I mean, exactly. there's plenty of games to come well, out between well, now and then. Well, you know what? I like this idea. We'll we'll keep it updated. We'll yeah. do this in like three months or something. I've I've actually like if we, it's so hard because because dev schedules are so inconsistent. Yep. Um, but there was this cool, like, uh, little game that I heard on another podcast. It had nothing to do with games. It was, it was something about movies. Um, but for, like, similar to, like, actors and Oscars, where you could, like, we could, like, do a draft, if you know anything about Oh, drafting. yeah. Uh-huh. Um, where you take, like, people off the board and we're like, I think this person, this person, and that's, like, your group. And then at the, by the time the awards come around, you know, like see who was the most accurate. Yeah, you, have, you have your uh, you have your bracket. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying though. Yeah, I think it'd be kind of cool. interesting. That would be really fun if we could figure it out. But yeah, something else we'd have that... to we'd have to make like a code and then save. We don't have the infrastructure yeah. for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's we can talk about some other. Yeah, time. but you know what we do have the infrastructure for. Uh, a, bun- a, bunch a, people, a bunch of people mobbing us for starting the riot. Huh? This week, starting the ride, we're talking about a game that has much hyper light. <laughs> See what I did? There. Oh, that, that's that the. Bad. That's yeah. almost the exact same <laughs> thing that I did in my intro. <laughs> hyper light drifter is what I'm trying to say, and uh, basically, hyper light drifter has been um, very hyped up um, no. because of the Kickstarter that it had, and, and there's a huge community around it, and all that sort of stuff. Um, but it looks like it's. At, because a lot of times these sorts of games, they get millions of dollars and people play it and then they get super disappointed by the game that they put their money into it. Um, this game so far seems to have gotten tons of uh, very positive reviews. It's like 91% on wow. Steam. Uh, it's like an 87 out of 100 on Metacritic, which is impressive to get over 80, you know. Um, so it's doing very well. And uh, for those of you who don't know what it is, Hyper Light Drifter... Um, it's kind of like an old school RPG Zelda ish, eh, kind of, but with a lot more uh, modernized mechanics and design, um, but with like eight bit, sixteen bit kind of feel to it. But obviously a lot smoother um, gameplay, a lot and, newer, and a lot better animation. Yeah, yeah, it's just much, much more improved. Um, I am first, so stoked for this. It's very striking, uh, visually striking. Um, super cool pixel pixel graphics and animations. Uh, like the, I said, the, the the lighting that they have in this game, like it, it doesn't yeah. it, it it doesn't feel like other. It's almost like the I don't I don't know if the there's actually like a lighting engine, or if they just did all the the art like, like that. On it. Yeah, but it 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 has this this feel to it that not a lot of other games really do. Almost like this. This haziness, but not in like a, I can't really see what's going on, but more like the the air is bending light in a way that isn't quite like earth. You've been smoking the jam. <laughs> no, no, for real. Like, is that not <laughs> is that not the vibe the that light, you sort of get? The light is bending the way that isn't quite earth. You know, no, you know, like you know, like on a on a on a foggy day, you're gonna there, there's gonna be light and it's gonna you know hit the fog in a certain way. Because of the the way that the fog is like, it, it's water and vapor and. Did all you that ever stuff. look at fog and, and it's like water yeah. vapor? <laughs> it hits your windshield and you're like, there whoa. Is-, <laughs> is it in the car or is it outside the car? I'm in a cloud. <laughs> On the ground, and that's what this game. Ground like. clouds. <laughs> all, 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 all four stoners who listen to the show are going to be like, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> right. to, to blow my fucking mind, man. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so, <Yeah>. but 
<laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so it's anyway. a, so it's a nine it's a nine person team uh which is uh heart machine is mm. the developer uh they've got they've got nine man it's so it's, pretty yeah, it's, man nine people man actually it looks like it would really be pretty under a black light <laughs> yeah it, 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 it looks like the entire thing's under a black light that's that's totally what it is. <laughs> now, one thing that's also really <laughs> impressive to me is the scale, and not just in like the game itself, but the the visual uh, yeah. aesthetic, the scale. There's there's this one particular screenshot uh, that really caught my eye the first time, um, and it's you ever see uh, Attack on Titan? Yeah, but but you know what it I've is. I've seen. Yeah. No. Okay, well, Attack on Titan, <laughs> for those of you who know what it is, it kind of reminds me of that. For those of you who don't, basically, the screenshot that I'm looking at, there's these giant, monstrous, I'm just kind of cyborgs. I'm not sure if they're robotic, they have like lights, or I'm not sure if they're just glowing or what. But the character that you play as is like standing up on this pyre, or like steps thing in front of these, and it looks like they're like poking through the clouds, and their shoulders and head are above the clouds, and they're still more massive than you. This tiny little thing. It's just, it's, it's cool to see that scope visually. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying the to same reason the that so I can post it on the, uh, it's, it's the same reason that, um, games like, uh, what the hell? Shadow of the Colossus, um, yep. Bloodborne and, and, and Dark Souls, they have ma- massive bosses. Like those games are really impressive when you're doing that. Yep. Uh, when you're playing those, because, there's just like you look and you're like holy shit you know um yeah there's the picture for those of you in the live chat uh it's just really really like you, you know what you know what else the this art kind of reminds intense, me of it gives you tingle yeah, it's it's intense, intense. You, you know what else this this art reminds me of <laughs> poncho i yeah it's got a very I, it's got a very poncho vibe to it not to not to not to knock your uh your game boner but I would actually say this is better than Poncho. Um, I, I think that it. I think that it's a. It's a different. It's, the dude. The, it's a different the person's aesthetic. bleeding. Yeah. Like that's. They add these little details that are impressive for this guy. I mean, I guess that's where the millions of dollars went. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> that's true. But I mean, but I mean, that's impressive for a game like this, especially considering nine people. Yeah. You know. Well, um, hey, you know they they obviously know what they're doing because this game is and look the the map just showed up on on the on the screen. That's a pretty it's a pretty big game. Yeah. So, Hyper Light Drifter, uh, PC, oh, Mac, Linux, Xbox One, VR. PS4. No, it's not on VR. <laughs> well, uh, Xbox One, PS4 coming soon. This would actually do really well on a console. Yeah, I I feel like I feel like I the, almost won it on my PS4. Oh, instead. just to play on the big screen, on a couch. My TV's broken, so I have to. Oh. I actually have my PS4 hooked up to my monitor. Yeah, but your monitor's huge anyway. It's well not compared. Play, to my play TV. it on the biggest screen you can. <laughs> I'm disappointed. Hyperlight Drifter. It's it, it's like it, it, it it's like an experience, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how much is it? Uh, it is <laughs> good question, Tech. While I look that up because I'm prepared, uh, it is 19.99 on Steam or 17.99 right now. By the way, get it on Humble. By the way, that 91 percent on Steam positive reviews that's out of 1950. That is 1,950 wow. reviews. 91 percent. That is hard, and Metacritic is ter- currently 86 out of 100. Also hard to do. I could see this one also doing well at IGF. Yes, yeah. good point. The good point we didn't even think about today's game. This this will probably do very well at IGF. I, I would yeah. imagine. Speaking of IGF, you still have the tag for it up in the. God damn it! <laughs> Why do I suck? One job. One yeah, and while, job. And while Josh fixes that, Rev and I are going to go down the street to the peep show. Please give all your attention to early access. <laughs> And this week on Peep Show, we have uh, what I what I called uh, in my first impressions uh, "Nuclear Throne" in first person. It is a first person uh, shooter, sort of like uh, old um, Think Doom. I'm yeah, Think Doom, Doom, Think like Castlevania, early Doom, Quake, Quake, except very fast. 
uh, very fast. intense. And it's not just the the shooting. There, there are a bunch of other different mechanics that they throw in there, but it's absolutely insane, and everything's big, and everything's pixelated, and it's just... I if, am... you, if, if you've seen the aesthetic of Nuclear Throne, think, uh, think robots and first person, and that's what you get. And it's so absolutely cool like there's there's a katana there are like tons of katanas and shotguns and no it, the, the numbers that pop up for the damage like what is it totally, called it's called punk punk bunker punk <laughs> punk bunker punk punks. bunker punks. i said that already josh it's you did not punks. i was listening punk the whole punks. time for you. you did not say the name no i i said it you i did said not it. i said it nope I did. All right, go ahead. You know what? If Josh is wrong about this, like he was on on Clus, uh, Super Truck, I wasn't. You can eat those where you were. Whatever. But whatever. You were wrong. I'm about not gonna. That. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna make him. I was trying to put up video, but I was waiting for him to say the damn title. <laughs> oh, so, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, so this is a game by Ninja Robot Dinosaur Studios. I think yep. that's what their name is. Yeah, Robot <laughs> Ninja Robot Dinosaur. Uh, and uh, this is... I'm trying to find other games. The only game that they have released uh, other than this was a game called Ray Ardent Science Ninja, which was rated uh, top 100 free games of 2011. One of the top 100 free games of 2011. Uh, it was on weird. Newgrounds and Congregate and all that. So that's that's sort of where they're coming from. And it's it's amazing. Like the When you look at the old game that they did and you look at this one, like the art is so similar, but the game is so different. Right. And like, <laughs> there's there's so much variety of stuff, and I I just want to play it. I That's what it is. This, I just want to so play this, it. So this this game this game has uh has ignited a my FPS love and and b my old school Doom and Duke Nukem love and uh my procedurally generated love. like this <laughs> this takes all of my nostalgia <laughs> buttons like all those hmm. games that were at least a decade before you two were born like like this <laughs> this, this this triggers this yeah. you know the, this is wolfenstein but it, but 3D it's so much bigger awesome. but it's so much bigger and you can look up <laughs> like, like you can look, jump like you can, you jump can, and you can exactly. open doors like, and <laughs> it also it also sort of feels a little bit like um uh uh heavy bullets which was a more yeah. stylized 3D uh, first person roguelike procedurally generated game but I think this one looks a little bit cooler and a little less uh, constricted oh Duke Nukem uh, Taddy in the, in the chat yeah, Duke Nukem Duke Nukem is another good example mm-hmm. but, I put well, I put but, this in knowing because it, the first thing that got me I was like oh that reminds me of Quake actually, and Doom this and, is a lot, this and I is loved a lot those like, games uh, even though I was pretty young when I played those yeah th- this is I will say that the I just saw the elevator the elevator is a lot like um, uh, Heavy Bullets but, just uh, with different mechanics. But the like, other than that, the re- I don't think I'm going to personally like this game, and it has nothing to do with the game itself. It's just really? I suck at twitch shooters. Um, this one doesn't look too hard. So I bet you you'd get really good. So I mean, there's that. But I knew the two of you would love it. So oh, that's why yeah. I put it oh, in yeah. there. It's it looks so. And the, the the really cool part too is that uh, if you go back and look at those those old game those old 3D quote unquote uh, 3D PC games where they have all of the I don't know if it was bit mapping or whatever on the walls for like the textures and stuff. This is what they were trying to do. Much more because smooth. Because the too. technology <laughs> and and the the infrastructure that they had wouldn't like you couldn't do this back then. And now that you can, like you can see that that there are actual like polygons that are mapped uh, that have that have textures that are like mapped to them. And there are like it, it's it's really cool. And then they but then they have like sprite animations for things. And then they have like real like it, it's. It's so cool. I I want to know more about how they made this game. You know, like my nostalgia boner is diamond heart. And, right and now. how they, and how, they mix, and how they mix the the two D and the three D very very well. Just like you know the older games, it doesn't it doesn't ever feel like you're you're looking at like a flat enemy, even though it is literally are. <laughs> yeah, and it, it, it's it, it. I think a lot of it has to do with the the art and the animation. But there's well, this like simplicity about it. The the modernization of it, is, it comes in a it's smoother obviously. Yeah. And B is that um, the rotation. Uh, yeah. Whereas a lot of the early games, it was very like side to side. Like this yeah. is this is like you're just flying around rotating, and, and even though they're two D, the uh, the the enemies, um, 
they rotate with you and therefore gives you kind of a 3D feel yeah, to the exactly. enemy, you know? Yeah. This well, is, that's what the, that is what they did back yeah. Uh, yeah. back in the day. Yeah, but this is like it's it's this is smooth. It's a lot more effective because of how smooth see, it is. Yeah. is what but what's so say. crazy? It's it's almost like these guys did what what Rogue Invader did, and they they have like 3D models for this because, and then they must have just turned them to like th- I know that's probably not what they did, but there's some things about this that just look now, too good to just be. The, the fact Art. that this is an early access, I, they're they're adding more stuff to it, but I'm pretty sure like the characters and things like that, there's going to be some um, different uh, strategies depending on who you're playing as. Um, yeah. Well, it's I'm it not, also has permadeath, so yeah. if your character dies, you're SOL. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not entirely sure as far as like what they're going to add um, when it comes to your characters and and. Uh, the different abilities they might have, like as you're going through the game, and what kind of different strategies are going to be. But um, just judging from what they have so far, I would trust that it's going to be fun and diverse. Yeah. Uh, to play different characters, and it looks like they already have a lot of it. A lot of it here. Like the the only thing that I would I would like to see more of is, uh, I guess room variety, enemy variety, and a little bit of um. It would be nice cover. to. The room variety would be nice because I understand that I understand that you're you're supposed to be in a bunker and it's supposed to be kind of desolate and you're like moving from bunker to bunker, but mm. like just to give you some maybe visual... a, little, a little bit of stuff you know maybe like a, visual a few more crates or mm. yeah or, or uh, destructible cover I know that's uh, asking that's, for a whole yeah, lot that's a, that's but, a little... but like maybe a little bit more on the ground because we have like in the video right now it's going to be a little bit delayed but you've got a bunch of the pillars and you have a lot of the destructible items. Um, uh, on screen, but, but other than that, it's just an empty room. And it, if they added, if if they added a little bit more to that, I know that's hard for procedurally generated games, and that's they're also probably working on it. Uh, if they do that, uh, sold. It would be cool to have like different, um, just different settings. I mean, it can be procedurally generated, but you know, this game is nothing like Minecraft, obviously. But like yeah. as far as procedural generation goes, you know, Minecraft has different biomes. Why can't yep. this one have different? rooms or settings or, well, you know, well uh, again early access so they yeah. will probably add that and there is already enough variety so that you don't get lost it is it is f- from you know from what we've seen pretty easy to to like understand where you are I, that, that's a problem that i had with a lot of the older shooters like wolfenstein and stuff i just get lost i was like i don't know where i am i, <laughs> I turn around this wall looks like that wall that wall looks like this wall it's a maze whereas this has enough variety so you sort of like understand Right, and I think it's not. I I don't think it's as vast. Yeah, uh, as far as that goes. So it's even if you get lost, you can just easily. It doesn't take long to walk the other way. Short, shorter levels filled with action-packed shooting. And And how much is it? And what platforms? All right, PC and Mac. Uh PC and Mac, and uh, I'm just trying to find the the button. Fourteen ninety nine. Thank you for finding that for me. You did your job. (laughs) It's. It's uh, it's currently out uh, March 30th in early access on Steam. So, yeah. There you go. I, I can't well, wait. Let's check it out. You know what else is out right now? <gasps> My, phone. My phone. My huh? phone is out. Your phone is out. Well, yeah. gee whiz, you should go mobile. Oh. Huh? <gasps> I'm too busy playing this week's going mobile game to talk about it. The end. Sorry. <laughs> the end. Moving on. End of the show. Uh, no. So this week's game is uh, actually doubles as both a free fun and a mobile. Um, it is by Noodle Cake Studios, and it's called Alto's Adventure. Um, it is an endless runner with in-game purchase capability. Um, your llamas have escaped, and you need to collect them while skiing downhill, collecting coins, dodging stuff. Oh, look at that. Look at that me tricks. grind. Right? You can totally grind and, and jump and do flips. And, oh, it's so awesome. But, uh, yeah, no, from, from the great people at, at Noodle Cake Studios that have... Uh, brought us so many great games um this one is at as far as i'm aware 
Android only, but that might not be the case. No, <laughs> it is. It is. IOS. It is on Amazon and iOS as Aww. well. Oh wow. yeah. So uh, yeah, Alto's Adventure. Um, I, I think it's fun. It's simple. Um, there are challenges inside, in addition to gaining points for doing stunts and you know jumping over things. Uh, there, there are challenges like you know jump two rocks in a single run and and go for five hundred continuous meters, do a do a trick, etc. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it. I've been playing it off and on throughout the show, and I was playing it at the start of this segment, and uh, it's a it's a lot of fun. Uh, I, I thoroughly enjoy it. The the in app purchases um, when you die, you have the option to you know watch a video to to regen where you're at, or you can just end your run and start over. Um, the in game currency is is used to uh, you know buy a life or, or whatever, and I assume you can buy more of that. That's what the in game uh, the the in-app purchases are. Well, we've uh, had experiences with Noodle Cakes um, exactly. advertising. Well, and they're, yeah, I was they're, say, they're pretty good about it. I was going to yeah. say, how is it? Is it similar to... It's, it, it's, not... Honestly, I, I the entire time I've been playing, I've been asked if I wanted to watch a video in order to continue my run. And if you say no, then you just start over. So cool. it seems I mean, it's been in very... this runner, so like, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, so I mean, and if you're I, having I a really good it. run, why would they punish you for like just watch the video? Exactly, that's cool. So yeah, it it it, it definitely is well done in in that regard. Um, and and I was wrong. This is published by Noodle Cake. It was developed by oh. Snowman. Snowman. Well, yeah. then the Google just Play start lied the whole, just start the whole thing. Over. Yeah. Google go, Play go. lied to me, so blame them. <laughs> well, you also you also have to consider that the. The app stores are not a very good place for good information. Yeah, but a lot, of time, <laughs> so, a lot of times that's all you can get. So that so that's why you come to Any Game Riot, so we can tell you which information is right and which is wrong, so you can play these free games. And it just so <laughs> happens we told you the wrong ones. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. But yeah, so check it out. Lots of fun, and uh, I'm going to play it while eating my dinner, I think. Um, no, I can't. <laughs> Screw family <Something>. time. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, any any questions on it? My question is, uh, how far have you gotten? Uh, I have made it a grand total of five hundred and eighteen meters. You suck. What? I'm bad at this. Yeah, you are. <laughs> well, you know what we're not bad at? Ending the show. Ending the show. <laughs> <laughs> this is the end of the show. Thank you so much for listening. If you like what we do, you want to help us uh, grow the show, grow the website. Help us grow the indie game community in general. Please consider going to indie, or to patreon.com slash indie game riot and uh, uh, giving us a monthly uh, assistance financially there. We would really appreciate it. It helps us do a lot of things. All the goals that we would achieve with said financial uh, stimulation is on that page that I just mentioned, patreon.com. Mm, financial stimulation. Slash <laughs> Indie Game Riot. Yeah, all we do with that money is just rub it on our junk. Um, <laughs> I get, so, I get, a, I get, a, I get an, uh, a letter in the mail each month with like two or three bucks that Josh sends me, and it's just like, it's like fun for like a week. Yeah. And a little, it's like one, and the, and a little bit of the a little bit of the, like the free sample lube. Um, yeah. <laughs> Indie Game Riot Lube, coming soon. <laughs> to the store. <laughs> <coughs> there is a store, by the way. But anyway. There's a store. You can buy cool shirts. The other way, the other way that you can help out is by uh, letting us know if you found like a cool game or someone to talk to or news that, that involves indie games. Uh, you can do that by, first of all, you can uh, go to hit, hitbox.tv slash Josh and 9.30 p.m. Eastern time uh, every Friday and just chat with us and chat directly like the fine folks uh, that are there now. Hello, everyone. Or you can go to Twitter at IGR Podcast or t- Facebook.com slash IGR Podcast. And, of course, you can just email us, contact at IndieGameRiot.com. All this and more is on IndieGameRiot.com. Any last words, gentlemen? Um, Hunger. Right, I'm, I'm curious. Yeah. I, I, I want to do another IGF predictions in, in a few months. We'll, Let's we'll, do that. We'll, 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 we'll keep that on the back burner. Yeah, we'll th- we'll think about like how to make that more interesting, or at the very least we'll we'll go over that again. 
So, and, and when we have come across more games. I realized the one thing I was going to mention in my weekly update that I didn't. Um, I, I apparently did not shave for so long I forgot how to. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I saw that Facebook. I, 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 I cut myself like nine times shaving off my goatee. <laughs> wow. I just realized you were missing your goatee. <laughs> I haven't even noticed. I'm going to be honest. You yeah. don't notice anything anymore. Uh, no, you don't pay yeah. any attention to us anymore. Oh, Josh. we're at that level of the relationship. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Honeymoon's over. <laughs> See you next time, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, I'm out. Yeah. Have a good one, folks. <laughs> Toodles, I guess.